bum 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 It's episode 280 of Super Mega Cast. It's time for a cella, 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 celebration. Whoa, let's get it started. Hey everyone. Hey guys. How's it going? I just I turned that one off immediately. Sorry, was some stupid. Oh uh, yeah, that was uh, he fucking cackled right in my fucking ear. Like I'm just I, I try to listen to podcasts to relax, you know. I got a stressful day at work, come home to relax, and I, I I click it, and you know I like these guys, but the fucking the the the, 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 the you know it's too much. Well, we're just we're just bagging on some classic radio DJ shit. Yeah, dude, we got it. We need to rebrand the podcast fully to be fully like radio DJ style with like like the fucking what are they called? They called boomers. What are they called? The uh, the like little the jockeys the mic jockeys no no the it's in, the name of like the sound effects there's a name it's like a radio stinger or something but but we need to just start I found a on the sound website we use I found a ton of them we should use those in fact here's one and here's that another is, oh. Your hard drive space is low. Oh shit, hard drive space is low? Yep. So it's time to stop the podcast momentarily. And and make sure the recording computer has enough space. Yep. And uh, we'll be right back. Yep. It's another rock and roll weekend. Okay, we cleared some space. Space has been cleared. And we are back. Back in action, baby. You know? Like Almost the, face like the Like the Looney Tunes were back in action. Was that the Mo- Looney Tunes movie? Uh, the one with Brendan Fraser. What was that movie? Which is awesome. And Steve Martin. I always confuse Steve Martin and Martin Lawrence, even though they're nothing <laughs> nothing alike. One is uh, pale white, and his hair is white. Like, completely, com- like, as white as it goes. I mean, the other is... Is, it a- is an actor. Yeah. So Because Steve Martin's an ar- artiste. I do love Steve Martin, man. Steve Martin is... I- I'm going to be very sad when he dies, because when I was... The Jerk is one of my favorite, like, old-school comedy movies. I was introduced to him through Cheaper by the Dozen. Oh, yeah. And then I saw Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, yeah, with, with John like, Favreau. This is a dirty movie. Yeah. This this movie says fuck. It There's does. that classic scene with the, uh, what do you call them? The flight ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Not, the and, flight ladies? No, the, the, like... Stewardesses? No, it wasn't a stewardess. It was, like, like a an, desk person. Oh, the oh, like the just the 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 ladies that work at the the desk or the, or the boys book flights or oh, boys or oh, men. I, I not boys, but you know, my mom calls me sexist because um, I refer to women or, or like I say girl instead of woman a lot. But we say the boys. I know. I say, I say well exactly, and I say like dude, and 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 like you know there will be. I refer to somebody my age, like, usually as, as, as girl. So, like, if, if you and I are talking and, and I'm talking about something happened, like, yeah, this girl came up to me, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. That implies, like, to, to me, that implies that that's someone my and age. usually you would say, well, I mean, guy, girl, they're there yeah. to say, yeah. And I say, so guy, say I mean, guy. But if I say this woman came up to me, then it's not, like, that to me just sounds like I'm talking about, like, someone in, like, their 50s or 60s. So my mom calls me sexist for that. She's like, why do you, why do you, what, they're women, Matt, not girls. Man, woman, guy, girl, like, they're just I use them all, bro. Other. I call, I, I say dude, dudette, bro, bro chacho. You can say whatever. Yeah, man. You can call, you can call women dudes. I do call women dudes. I do too. And bro. Dude. <laughs> I say bro and dude a lot. I say dude a lot. I, I've always been a big dude Did guy. Did it start out as a bit for us too? Like us saying bro and dude. Yeah, dude. The, like Bro. Bro kind of started out as, 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 it's one of those things where it was a meme, like, bro, <laughs> and then now I just, it's in my vocabulary. Yeah. I say bro a lot. Good. And you do too. Mm-hmm. You said to me the other day over text. I did. And, and I say dude, I've said dude for I say man a lot. I say man a lot. But I never say they, sure thing, woman, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and no one says woman. Like, this- sure thing, woman. Okay, lady. Lady sounds like dismissive. Like lady, you know, because ladies always use when it's like, Hey, whatever, lady. You know, lady, lady is used more dismissively. I, I honestly think it's because your mom is withering, you know? And so she is jealous of all the 
pretty flowers she sees in the field on a day to day basis when she goes on her uh, like I don't know point two mile walks with her cane. Well, I wouldn't be calling her girl. I'd call her woman. Exactly. And I think that's and what I upsets. Th- that's her. that's what it is. She's like, why are you calling this twenty six year old girl, but you're calling me woman? You can't you, look in the mirror, mom. That, <laughs> look in the mirror. That's all. She's gonna be her feelings gonna be real hurt if she listens to this. Uh, we're just speaking facts. I know. And mom, guess what? Facts don't care about your feelings. So. Sorry. Yep. No, seriously, we're sorry. We're sorry that facts don't care about your feelings. Yeah, it's a shame, honestly. I wish I wish it wasn't so. I wish... Say it ain't so. I, I will, will not, not go. go. Turn, Turn the, the lights, lights off. Carry, carry me home. na 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 Dude, I, 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 got, I had a little Blink-182 phase recently, like a resurgence. I, uh... Like, the first... It was like January 2nd, actually. I went for a drive to clear my head, and I just listened to a bunch of old Blink-182. Ooh. Like, uh, that I'll, song, Stay Together for the Kids. I like listening to a lot of, uh, like, nostalgic stuff. In one of my, like, uh, workout playlists, I have, Shotties like a melody in my head. And I'm, just, like, running to it. It just, like, brings me back to a time where, like... Simpler times. S- simpler times where I was um, just as stupid, but... Not as responsible, you know what I mean? You didn't know, you didn't, your eyes weren't as open to the cruelties of the world. Of the world, how, 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 how mean the world can be to me. I thought, I thought bad things happened to other people, but no, <sighs> bad things can happen to me, I guess. Yeah. I get paranoid sometimes when I used to go on those subreddits with like r slash watch people die and shit. I'd be like, cause for me it's like, these people had no idea like a tree was gonna like fucking fall right Dude. on them. That's it's because that's, of high winds. It's like, it, it, or a car, someone's not looking, a car jumps a fucking curb and mows down someone on like a sidewalk or some shit. It's we like, ha- Jesus. We had to sign something recently, which we can't talk about yet, but you and I had to sign something. And one of the, there was like a clause that like, the only way like the contract could be terminated. It had like a list of things that could like terminate the contract. And one of them was an act of God. Yep. That's an act of God. Yes. Like. I don't know how you can define an act of God, but like, you know it when you see it. It's like a struck tree by fucking, lightning, a tree dude, falling. How fucking, what are the odds of getting struck by lightning? That's gotta be the, like, that That sucks to die it, that way. It, got, it happened to a guy like two or three times or some shit. A lot like of that. people survive it. They get cool ass tattoos. Yeah, dude. They get fucking like, like, like Harry Potter scars, but on their whole body. You know? They do. It's because the electricity fucking goes through you and scars you. Well, Harry Potter was saved uh, by love. Yeah. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. So that's his, the mother's, last... his mother's love. Mm. That's what uh, counteracted the spell. Because her love was a protection spell around him. Right? Am I Potterheads, am I right about that? Hey, guys, it's Matt. I'm cutting in from later in the podcast to say, coming up are some Harry Potter spoilers. So make sure if you, if you don't want any Harry Potter spoilers, you skip ahead. Mm-hmm. Come on, Potterheads. Come on, Potterheads. You gotta... I think I I think I, I, I was get... Was Harry a Horcrux on? himself? Shh. Stop, dude. That's a big spoiler. Yes. Oh, oh, oh okay. Well, I'm, I mean, okay, Harry Potter has been finished for like <laughs> 15 years. Yeah. If you don't know the end. No, it has. It has it. Okay, when did, when did the final book come out? The final movie came out in 2012. I remember because I was a senior when I so saw that's, it. I so a decade the, since the movie came out. To the premiere. But the final book, I did go to that in theaters. I remember that. I love Harry Potter, man. Harry Potter's amazing, man. The final book no, came out in 2007. I never read the books. I've read, like, the first and the third one. <laughs> That's all I've read. I read the first... I think I read the first three. I just like the movies. The, the movies, movies are, are always, awesome. like... Because for me as a kid, the reason I liked them so much is they were fun and exciting, and it was cool to enter this world. Because when you're a kid, your imagination, when you go to a movie, it's like you are actually kind of visiting another place. It's really cool what the child imagination is like. And right. And um. As well, it it was it just kind of uh, they aged with me, so I felt like oh yeah. they're kind of maturing with me. And as a as a, as a young boy who doesn't who gets scared easily and doesn't like horror didn't like horror movies that much, I, they were kind of like mini horror movies for me because they had like jump scares and scenes that were kind of scary for yeah. young children. I like a three headed dog barking or a book that randomly. You open it, and it, and it, no, the book, like, you open it, and it just goes, ah! It's the, oh, that, the screaming yeah. book from the first one. Wasn't there also a book that was, like... Yeah, that was in the, fuck, I can't remember which one Goblet of Fire. Was. 
Yeah, when he go, when he starts out in that like fucking house or whatever. I watched uh, Goblet of Fire recently. I went uh, actually Hollywood Forever Cemetery. They do. Uh, we should go. They do movies where <laughs> the they, ending of that one's such a downer. It did, really is. Did you leave and you're just like, hmm? That's the my boy that one, fun. right? Yeah, <laughs> like my boy. It ends and it's like he, the student, has died. Voldemort's back, and then everyone's just kind of like, well, I guess we'll come back next year. Bye. Yeah, it, it's a downer. <laughs> it but, is. but it gets me very excited for the next one. Yeah. You know, Hollywood Forever Cemetery, though, they they do this event where, um, you know, they have a huge lawn, and you can go and, like, with a blanket and lay I down. I and they spirited they away do... at this thing. It, yeah. was, it was on a lawn, and I think it was at a cemetery, and I watched Spirited Ho- Away. In Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, it's probably that, yeah. I went and saw I Goblet asleep. of Fire there a couple months ago. So They have a bunch of, like, food trucks and a mm-hmm. uh, bunch of porta potties if you got to take a drop of deuce during the movie. Um, it was it was really but it was fun. Harry Potter. Yeah, and you enjoyed it. And they let you drink in there too. You like so. Harry Potter? I love Harry Potter. I would, would you just, say it's like a hit? Would you say it's a defining nostalgic itch for you at all? I uh, not in terms of defining your character, but your nostalgia. Yes, like, but but for a different reason. Okay, because my sister was obsessed with Harry Potter. Like that was like her favorite thing. Mm. And I was she was reading the books, and I was too young to, re- or I wasn't too young. I just didn't read them uh, back then. And uh, You're too busy reading the dictionary. Exactly. To improve I, I was actually reading the encyclopedia. <laughs> Every single encyclopedia. Um, but she was into it. So I remember Harry Potter like from my sister's excitement for would it. She like dress it. Would she get like scarves and like? I don't think so. But some people dressed up for the premiere. Oh, a lot of people did. A lot of people cosplayed. A lot of people when I when I went to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, a lot of people dressed up. Okay. Called them fucking losers. <laughs> uh, behind their backs because they were like you're a grown ass you're a grown ass person what I, are you doing I get the whole thing where it's like it's embarrassing you're an adult and you're no, I lo- it's fun. Harry Potter and it's, it's like fun who fuck gives off? a fuck like why is there why is there an age limit to have fun and I get it it's because like and we were we, we kind of do it too you know we're all we're all guilty of it but you know you want to seem above something at some point because it makes you feel yeah. better right mm-hmm. it makes you feel like ooh my I, I am more um Learn it in what is it's like what is what is good and what is bad. Here's here's how I would see it is I wouldn't go to a Harry Potter movie dressed up uh, if I was by myself. But if I went with friends and they wanted to do it too, That'd I would be do fun. it. Should be very fun. You and, and I there's should... nothing wrong with going by yourself and getting dressed up. No, something. no, no, totally. I'm saying from my personal preference, yeah. I wouldn't want to do that. I'd feel uncomfortable. But that's always done it like con. I, I I feel like in general though, like I I remember people were kind of like annoyed. With like others being interested in like being older and being interested in Harry Potter and how it's cringe, but I I see more of it as kind of like the same type of community that you see at uh, conventions. And yes, there is there there are a lot of there's a lot of cringe to be had at conventions. There's a lot of cringe in any uh, fan base, any fandom. Look at you, <laughs> Megheads. <laughs> um, but uh, I just. I feel like it, it's more about camaraderie. It's like it's like the same reason your parents took you to church or like you made you go to youth group. It's to we socialize and because you have like interests and you know at that time it was God, but now it's 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 wizards and Hogwarts and and, right. and Dobby and all that mm-hmm. fucking shit. She's a good house elf, you know. I Dobby's giving. I think you've about, given Dobby clothes. Let people like what they want to like, you know. As long as it's not hurting no one or you're not being. Like, there, there's a line, I think. Like, you can be really into something. It's like, who, who cares if you're really, you know, into super mega? When you start writing fan fiction about me and Ryan raping each other, then then that, that, there might be a line that's being crossed there. But, you know what I mean? Like, if you like something, like it. Who cares? You've it's like, given Dobby head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am free. Oh. <clears throat> Curse you, you dirty elf! That's him wiping his mouth and then. I told you to warn me. <laughs> oh, dude, Dobby, fucking! I, oh my God! I mean, how much? How? I mean, we could say spo- Harry Potter spoilers, right? You're talking about when Dobby's his demise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shit was sad. Yeah, we're talking about Harry Potter. You know, spoilers. If you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, but you should. I guess there's have. at least one person that's like reading the books for the first time right now, and they're pissed. Here, you know, I'll record this and put this earlier. Hey guys, it's Matt. I'm cutting in from later in the podcast to say coming up are some Harry Potter spoilers. So make sure if you if you don't want any Harry Potter spoilers, you skip ahead. Uh-huh. A little sound clip yeah, you can use that's to great. transition. Yeah. Do I need to do another one? Did you transition it? Uh just just one more for fun. Uh-huh. 
yesterday I was asleep on the couch out uh because you know I'm 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 trying to my trainer told me to stop caffeine for a month and you didn't you so you don't want to talk about dead Dobby anymore. no no let's talk about dead Dobby I'll yeah it was very sad okay I just wanted to make because you wanted to say something about dead Dobby oh I just saying it just made me so fucking sad yeah that that was sad them them taking like a like a gliding shot over all the major dead characters in like a 10 second shot and you going, oh, okay, I guess th th they're dead for good. Oh, they're dead too. Wait, when do they do that? <laughs> like in the in the last movie, it's like after like one of the first battles, the camera's like going through and you're seeing like all who have like- Does Neville die? Perished. No, Neville, Neville's awesome. He fucking, he fucking slices Nagini's head off. Ooh. The snake, the giant. Yeah. yeah. There was who is a Horcrux. Oh, herself, dude. So I don't, I don't. It's been so long since I've seen them that I don't remember any of this stuff. Which you know, that's good. That means I can go watch any question. But that means I can watch them again and they'll be fresh. Yeah. Except I've seen Goblet of Fire like twice in the last year, but the other ones. The third one is typically people's like, oh, that's where the series turned to where it's like, okay, this will be remembered. This is great. The first two are are classics because Christopher Columbus just has that vibe about his movies. You know, like like Home Alone vibe. It's like, like kind of like family he's a, friendly, very one. He, he's good at kind of directing the perspective of he's good at directing kids and directing the perspective of yeah. how wondrous and cool this universe would be to kids. He's good at colonization, too. Yes. But it, I really, 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 <laughs> I kind of want to reread Harry Potter. Like, I kind of want to start from the first one and because, you know, my fucking attention span is so like reading as an adult as a mm -hmm. man is not very easy for me because I just you know We've been we've been conditioned for our attention spans to be you know with TikTok and you know, it's just boom 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 I have a question for you. Yeah, I have an answer for you. Do you think there's some sort of Stance one must take in terms of buying the books or reading the books or whatever support like buying the blu-rays watching the movie all of that going to the Hogwarts land at Universal. Do, do you think there's a there's a point where it's it's not I'm trying to like word this well or carefully I but Jake J, J, Joe JK Rowling um she has uh made some transphobic statements in the past and she has not backpedaled at all. Um she keeps digging a grave for herself. She's also she just, just doesn't said have some to say anything. That's odd the thing. things. She just doesn't need to say anything. Do you think that in any way that that connection mars one's ability to support her in a in a morally like in in a good in a good moral way? You know what I mean? Like is is it is it moral to support like? Uh, I guess the same question would be, and I don't have an answer, but it's like. Uh, the guy who wrote Ender's Game, it's a it's a great sci-fi novel. I forget his name. I'm sorry, but he's a fucking racist. In mm. so it's like, can can you still enjoy an art piece given that the proceeds and in general the the name uh, are attached to such a controversial controversial figure? I think that at the end of the day, it comes down to one's personal morals. Like, well. Like, well, here's the thing is like J.K. Rowling said a bunch of transphobic shit, but I still love Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And and the way I see it is certain things are so big that it's almost like even though the person that made it has done something bad, certain franchises are so big that it's almost like the creator might be transphobic, but it's like the, the whole franchise is so big that it's almost not even – hers anymore does that make sense i get that it's it's like it's if, if she going... were a smaller author and it was a smaller series then yeah i'd be like oh i, I don't want to support that but it's because it's such a big franchise and it's it's like almost separated from her and what she says is awful so essentially you're kind of like death of death of the author in a sense where um do you see anyone trying to boycott harry potter over no her? no but I, I i see like threads talking about it every now and then and i yeah i think it's an interesting topic. it is because it's, it's like it's it's um oh I was I was gonna mention something because I had something directly linked off of what you were saying. Michael Jackson is another example. That, of like, it wasn't about Michael Jackson. But think about like what, once something, in this case, Michael Jackson's music becomes so popular, so big, that almost it's like oh sorry I, yeah you're like, death of the artist where 
the person's work is so big that it more and so collectively belongs to the world, society, I guess, yeah, or society. And it's like they can't they can't ruin it by, I guess, their bullshit. Because, you know, there's the argument of like separating the art from the artist. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can't always do that in a lot of cases. Like Chris Brown. Yeah. Um, he just made such bad music that I couldn't, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why. Uh, no, but definitely, like, my, like, I love Michael Jackson's music, mm -hmm. and they still play it on the radio, they still, it's like, even though, you know, he was accused of all that stuff, like, it seems like it's, his music's, like, separated from, from him and all that, mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like Harry Potter's the same way, when a franchise gets, like, so big, like, I think if, uh, if, um, uh, George Lucas came out and was like, yeah, uh, don't really like black people too much. Like, Star Wars would still go on and people wouldn't boycott it because it's, it's so, such a big franchise. Yeah. But if, but if, like, Star Wars was a small, like, television series that had, like, a popular fan base, wasn't that big, then people would not watch it anymore, you know? It's, mm -hmm. There's something weird when it's, like, when it's, when something's that big, it almost, like, it is its own entity away from the artist. Yeah. You know? It's just interesting. It is interesting. It's it's very interesting. Because a Have lot. Have you of, ever had to stop supporting an artist you really liked yeah. because of something? Yeah. What would that be? Um, I'm trying to remember. There there were some, like there there's. If you feel comfortable sharing. I'm I'm trying to remember specifically, but there's definitely like artists that I really liked that like, I had to st I I had to stop listening to or and, and for for two reasons one for like the moral reason but two it just like it didn't feel right after that it, yeah like, i couldn't enjoy it the same knowing that they're a piece of shit uh I'm trying to think of an example like if if i if somebody comes like it comes out as a rapist then like i can't you know listen to their music anymore mm -hmm. or like enjoy their jokes or whatever anymore <laughs> I, I said comes out as a rape as if it's like coming out as gay like mom dad <laughs> i'm a rapist no oh my but god yeah, we son, we son, love you no matter what. Son, we've known. <laughs> son, we've known since you were a little boy. We've known since you got accepted to Sigma Stupid Psi or whatever the fuck <laughs> they call it. Uh, I can't think of a specific example right now, but there's definitely artists that I've you know had to. And this isn't like cancel culture bullshit. It's like this is it. It, it ruins your ability to enjoy the art itself because the person like like for example like I can't really enjoy this is kind of, it's it's kind of similar but like i can't enjoy jared leto's performances in anything cuz i only see jared leto the douchebag cultist cultist actor dude right like, oh I, yeah that's exactly like there's this new like trailer that's why i'm with tom cruise where it's like morpheus um and it just looks so bad tom cruise is it's it's such a weird case because like I love whatever tom movie cruise, he's in it's He's not playing like he is playing a character, but it's like it's Tom Cruise. Yeah. It's the fact that it's Tom Cruise, like in Tropic Thunder. Like the reason that like <laughs> Gross Lessman was such like an iconic character was because it was played by Tom Cruise of all people. Yeah, yeah. I just rewatched that uh, a couple weeks ago. Les Grossman, baby. And fucking uh, Matthew McConaughey's character, <laughs> so fucking funny dude. That movie is is. In that version that you saw, did they have a scene where Matthew McConaughey was flipping through Playboys and saw boobies? Mm -hmm. Yep. Damn it! That's not the thea that's not the theatrical release. I watched it on Amazon Prime. I own it. They only put out like I, I don't know why, but they added certain scenes, and the director's cut for a long time was like the only cut, or is probably the only cut you can purchase on a physical copy. I can't like the 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 theatrical cut had shorter some some scenes were cut shorter, and they didn't have that scene. They like. They added some stuff. Kirk Lazarus. He's so fun. Like, at the end when he's in the helicopter and he has, like, a tear in his eyes. Fucking so fun. Like, I... Wait a second. Do you see the boobs? Cause I, I think don't he remember, Because I think actually. he flips through it, but you don't... It doesn't show anything, but in the, like, director's cut version, he's flipping through right. it, and then it cuts to a close-up of the page. Okay, I don't notice that stuff. I'm sorry. Cut, it, cut that out. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're editing this one. Oh, yeah. Matt, cut it out. Uh... But that's a that's a that is a fun definitely could not be made today. Uh, no, I wonder if the pendulum will swing back and and that stuff will be like make it like that type of humor that's so offensive will be allowed again. 
I mean, know? offense, quote unquote, offensive humor is still yeah, allowed. it's still allowed. But I mean, like, like you're not gonna see people like that do that anymore. Like, yeah. you're not gonna see Robert Downey Jr. do blackface in a movie, or which was insane because he was coming off of Iron Man from that. Oh yeah. So it was like Jesus. Oh yeah. Whoa. Hey, it worked. Yeah, a lot of people were upset about that and and the simple Jack stuff. Uh, you know, with Ben, ben Stiller's. <laughs> I feel like the simple Jack stuff was a little more "quote unquote" problematic than yeah than because, Robert Downey Jr.'s blackface because in universe and in character, the whole point of like him being in blackface is to show the kind of self absorption of artists and how they and he gets called out by the yeah. actually black like Character. guy in the platoon yeah. yeah so it's like there there is like a message with it I Al Pacino guess. <laughs> yes Al Pacino's booty, booty sweat. sweat I love the pussy I love the booty sweat dude booty sweat popping ass open <laughs> <laughs> so good yeah uh so there and so there was like kind of a message with that but the simple jack stuff was just I guess making fun of uh people with, with no say it um, Ad reads. Ryan and I have both been exercising recently, and one of the most important things for us to stay healthy is having a good meal. And you know, McDonald's ain't cutting it. Eating cupcakes at 3 a.m. ain't cutting it. Uh, but luckily, we found Freshly, who is here to sponsor our podcast today. Food that's fast doesn't have to be fast food. Freshly offers quality meals without the hard work. Their meals are designed by nutritionists, cooked by chefs, then delivered fresh. Other meal deliveries need to be prepped and cooked, but Freshly is ready to eat in three minutes. 2022 is going to be a busy year for all of us. We got lots of lots of lots of work to do. Lots of work. I know I have a lot of work. So Freshly is amazing because I don't have to prep the meals. All I got to do is just cook them and and boom, dinner is ready and they're delicious. Listen, no one wants to spend an hour cooking dinner after getting home, a long day of work and you're tired. And at the end of a long day, takeout doesn't have to be your only option for an easy dinner. You know, it's expensive. It adds up. And whether it's for you or your whole family, Freshly gives you convenience, flavor and nutrition. A couple months ago, uh, I was we were slamming real hard at the Super Megaplex, and I, I got home every night for a week at like midnight, and I just wished that I had an easy meal to eat. But nope, all the restaurants were closed. I couldn't order. I didn't really have any food. I was in a pinch. Uh, if I had had Freshly, oh my God, I could have come home and just had a delicious chef cooked meal in just like three minutes. Now, luckily, I do have Freshly, and it is mwah. Use the Freshly website or app to find meals that fit your lifestyle with plans that work for your dietary needs, preferences, tastes, and family size. Choose from over 50 nutritionist design entrees like their classic steak peppercorn, multi serve sides like their masterful mac and cheese, or their new line of plant based meals. It's affordable and convenient. Skip the grocery shopping and dirty dishes. Your meals arrive cooked and fresh every single week. And new meals are added weekly, so you're never stuck eating the same thing over and over. Stop stressing about dinner. Right now, Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off for your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash super. That's $40 off at Freshly.com slash super. Yum, yum, yum. Cheers to 2022 and resolutions you can actually keep. How about having clean and shiny balls all year round? Our sponsors at Manscaped are here to save your balls this year and make the ball drop into 2022 the cleanest and sexiest ever. Set your first New Year's resolution with good intentions and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code SUPERMEGA for 20% off plus free shipping. And why should you do that? Well, that's because Manscaped is epic. Within their new Performance Package 4.0, you'll find the Signature Lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin. The advanced skin-safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate nuts. It also comes equipped with a 4000 KLED spotlight that will shine a light to the promised land 2022 looks to be. And the new product that needs no introduction, the Ultra Premium Body Wash from Manscaped, solves all three for the perfect addition to your daily grooming routine, but in the shower. I shower every day, and hope you do too. This body wash smells great. It's cologne infused with aloe vera and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean, nice, and moisturized. God, I love shaving my nuts with Manscaped. It's super easy, and uh, from all the compliments I get, uh, they say, Wow, Ryan, you always come in to work today with such a cleanly shaven dick and balls. Whether your resolution is to work out more or travel to new places, be sure to travel to manscaped.com for our exclusive offer at 20% off plus free shipping with the code SUPERMEGA. Cheers to new balls in 2022. Remember, get 20% off and free shipping with code SUPERMEGA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off. Uh, do it. Manscaped.com. Use code SUPERMEGA. Bada boom, bada bing.
Bam, bip, bop. Thanks for saying it while we were busy with the ad. Reason. Yeah, totally, totally, yeah. 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 See, so, yeah, I just didn't want to say it into the microphone. No, you didn't want to put it in the podcast. But yeah, Simple Jack, um, uh, Ben Stiller's best role. <laughs> I used to be a big Stiller head, bro. I was a big Ben head. I loved Ben Stiller. Like, I, Z- Zoolander all, is one of the best comedy movies ever, in my opinion. Like, the, the first Zoolander. The only role where he, like, stood out to me, because, like, I usually typically don't... It's not that I don't like Ben Stiller. I just am not... And Ant, like I'm not enamored, or I'm not ever like impressed, or I'm not. He's not like a star focus of like something that I that I like, I guess, about a movie. But in, he he steals the show in Dodgeball. He's great in Dodgeball. I haven't seen Dodgeball. Do you know Dodgeball's that Dodgeball's so good? I've never seen Vince it. Vaughn. Come on, Vince Vaughn is is a dude. He is a dude. He's a dude, man. He was in Cell Block. 99. Yeah, I I only saw the ending of that movie. I need to fucking and on your recommendation, I watched the whole thing, thinking you had watched the whole. No, thing. I'd only seen the ending, but but the ending, I walked in, I liked, I liked what I saw a lot. Yeah, the ending's awesome. <laughs> the final shot. <laughs> hey, yeah, we we can't say it, but because that is a that is a more relevant recent movie. Yeah, Wedding Crashers. I think. Well, I haven't seen it in like seven, eight years. I just remember watching it at a sleepover growing up, and the, and then those the, styles the, of the movies, boobs, the boobs in his face. Oh it's, shit! It's not yeah. actually no, it's, it's a stunt. It's, it's not a actually it, stunt Isla, double. Isla? It's a, no, it's a body double of yeah. Il- Isla uh, Il- Fisher, Isla, 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 Isla Fisher. Isla? I don't know how you say it. Isla Fisher is Isla Fisher. Who's she married to again? Uh, Borat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's right. She's married to a uh, Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen. Cohen. Man, I I love Sasha Baron Cohen is a, is a very big inspiration to me in terms of like comedic stuff. I I I ever done, since Borat. Yeah, Borat too. Kind of, I think I kind of ruined it for myself a little because I hyped it up to myself so 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 much that yeah. it would have been impossible to live up to. Um, it was just too. I think Borat one was good because it was nuanced, and Borat two was a little bit just too on the nose. It was too heavy-handed and, and that's, not to I, say that Bor- Borat in general is heavy-handed in general with like what he does but like the second one I feel like was the, the heavy-handed in terms of them forcing a plot yes like really forcing and, a plot the first one it was so loose because it was the like the Pam message. Anderson shit and just like him going across America it was like a very loose plot but this one it was it felt very structured so they had to fit the the stunts within the plot, I guess. It yeah. felt like they, it was, it just felt more forced. Yeah. And I like Sasha Baron Cohen's like activism and stuff. It just felt like, it felt, it kind of, I feel like, um, the political plot line in Borat 2 kind of took away from Borat a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, it made it more focused on like Donald Trump orange and yeah. less of like Borat, you know, being Borat. Uh, and I didn't like the fact there was a woman in the movie. And um, she took a big focus of it, too. Yeah, dude. <sighs> yeah, fucking sp- mm. They replaced a, a wonderful character with a woman. Disgusting. Azamat? You can't replace Azamat Bogatov with, with a woman. Not Azamat Bogatov, dude. Who'd they replace? What do you mean? They were... No, no, that's what I'm... I was agreeing with you by saying oh. that. Oh, oh, yeah, I thought you were saying, like, no, not him. No, 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 I was agreeing with you. No, Sasha Baron Cohen is is very, very funny. Very, very. Bruno is is one of my all time faves. Uh, a very uh, Sasha Baron Cohen is just one of the greatest comedians ever. Yeah, I think so too. In my opinion, he's, he's he's one of the greats for what he's given us. Yeah, and I like his activism too, like his political activism. It just it the Borat. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not. I'm trying not to hype up Jackass Four. See, I think it's it's hard not. <laughs> I know it's like not. You're gonna, gonna be as enjoy. Good as, you're just gonna watch people hurt themselves. Yeah. You know they're not trying to force a plot or any like message. Like Jackass is literally just a bunch of like idiots hurting themselves. And I, I don't mean like they're not stupid. I mean you you have mm. to you have to, idiots in terms of only idiots would would do shit like this. If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. Yeah. I love the Jackass franchise, and we're, we're gonna go see it for my birthday. Yes, we are. It comes out February fourth. My twenty sixth birthday is February fifth. Uh, I'm very, very excited for that, though. It has a lot of people I like. It actually, like, so they add in more members to, like, the Jackass crew. And one of them is a guy that I followed on Instagram forever. Uh, Zach Hill, I think is his name. The the big guy with the curly hair and the glasses. He, uh, 
I followed him ages ago because he did Jack. Uh, uh, his at is Zackass because he was inspired by Jackass and a Jackass style stunts by himself on his Instagram. Okay. And I guess he got a lot of traction and they actually got him as part of the crew. And he's done some shit that I'm like, dude, oh my God. Like he's done some shit that just like what? Just like too far with the pain. Um, a lot of stuff with his nuts. If I'm not mistaken, he did uh, like he jumped into I think he did like a a bike thing into cactuses, like where he like landed on a bed of cactuses and they were like oh. all in him. The cactus shit sucks. Um and then there's also Jasper from uh Odd Future. He's he's Jasper. The, yeah. Hey, it's not Jasper, a not even a rapper. Only on this track to make my racks grow faster. But yeah, I love Jasper. And he's he's part of Jackass now. I wonder how that happened. I'm like, that's just like interesting. And there's a uh, there's, I think there's a girl, there's a, a woman, um, Eric Andre's in it, Tyler the Creator's in it. Yeah, they, the, Machine Gun Kelly, your favorite? My fave, my man. Yeah, so. Have you listened to his, uh, any of his, uh, recent stuff? Music? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of it? It's not bad. Okay. I like, uh. You like his classic stuff more? I actually don't really know any of his classic stuff. Neither do I. But he made that, like, he had a recent song he dropped, like, last year that was kind of, like, pop punk I liked. It okay. wasn't bad. Um. I just love his interviews. <laughs> Man, I wait until she's 18, dog. Dude, he's a father now. He's learned. Is he a father? He's grown. I think so. Damn. He, he, uh, he's, he's, he's a horny motherfucker. He's with, uh. I got, I got a DM yesterday from Transformers, some, uh, Megan Fox. Yeah. This girl DM me yesterday and said, you look like dollar store machine gun Kelly. And I was so tempted to respond because I had a really good response loaded up, but I wasn't oh, yeah. going to do that. What was it? What was the I response? I don't want to say it. It's mean. Okay. Okay. Never mind. I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. But it was it was epic. Were you about to bully someone? Well, she was bullying me. True. 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 Yeah, I understand. It's if if I if I retaliate, it's not bullying. There's nothing wrong with it's, clapping back. It's self defense. You know what I'm saying? You know, clapping back is okay. The court would rule in in self defense. Whoa! What the hell? What? Sorry, it's open Instagram, and the first thing I saw is uh, Brockhampton posted a. Uh, uh, a thing saying Brockhampton's upcoming shows at the O2 Academy Brixton in London and at Coachella will be our final performances as a group. All other tour dates are canceled effective immediately. Refunds will be given. Uh, following these four performances, we will be taking an indefinite hiatus as a group. Uh, thank you for the last eight years. <laughs> R.I.P. Schlockhampton. You know what I'm Damn, saying? I guess they're breaking up. Well, they, they they announced a while ago that they were doing they they were gonna finish, but damn, I wonder why. They probably fight a lot with each other. They probably, you know, you know, punching each other and screaming and kissing on each other. I don't know. I feel like Brockhampton probably has a lot of like drama in internally. They've always had a lot of drama. Yeah, I feel because they all lived in a house together, and I feel like that would have been the the most like any anytime there's something like that, like a content house, it's just toxic. Like mm -hmm. there's, I've never I've never heard of a content house that went well. Um, are you forgetting about kids with problems in Markiplier game? And, yeah, uh, actually, you're right. You know what? I, I take that back. That's the only time it went perfect. And Syndigo? Syndigo, Kids with Problems, and Markiplier Game? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay, I take it back. I take it back. Everything was perfect about that. But every other time I've seen a content house, there's, there's it just, it's just a bad idea. In, in concept, it's a great idea, right? It's like, oh, we live together. We're, all, we're always making content. We're all making money together. We're having fun. No, it's an awful idea. It always seems kind of like a pyramid. You know what I mean? A pyramid of like someone's at the top. Someone someone's at the top and then there are other people other people that depending on how successful they get from this one person, you know, that's where they are or how much they're featured in videos. Here is a, a piece of advice I will offer that my sister told me uh when I was leaving high school and you know, I thought she was just like <laughs> but now looking back, it was uh don't don't live with your best friends uh, because, you know, it, 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 it can work, but it can also, like, uh, strain relationships. Yeah. Come sick of each other. I've lived with many best friends, and I've lived with you. You did. And, uh, like, basically, I, I was miserable every day of my, living with you. I absolutely hated it. No. Um, no, I, I liked living with you. But, li like, living with, living with, moving in, like, a bunch of best friends together in a house... It, it's fun, but there, it will create problems. So just know that, you know. 
just just for all you little kids going off to college and stuff. I just like being alone. I love living by myself. Man. I love having my own. Little and Ron little and I space. moved out from each other not because you know anything like that. We just wanted our own places. Yeah, lease was about to come up, and it's like, hey, you know, we've been this place two years. What if we had our own places? Because so, the whole idea was like, and if and if it scares us, or if we can't really pull through with like rent, we can always come back and like, you know, try this out again. But it was like, do can are we at the point to where we can like have our own places now? Yeah. And we were. Well, it was a very exciting Woo! thought because neither of us had ever done that. No. And it's like, oh, well, we're adults now. We can, like, oh, my God, what if I have my own place? Like, that was something that that just felt uh, like it was a big step forward in, like, growing up. Mm -hmm. That, And then also I got a car, my first car, right after that. I got a Honda Civic. Because you were using my, oh, oh yeah. You are using my Fiat for a yeah. while. I was, I, dude, I would zip around in your little <laughs> Fiat. That Same. thing was fun. Just at any parking spot, any of them, you could just... Also, like, merging on highways, super easy. Oh, if someone didn't want to let you in, you're like, too bad, I'm getting I, in. I know. Because all you do is, all all the Fiat does is, like, rotate into the parking yeah. position. Yeah, it's a tiny-ass car. It was, it was, I liked that car, I missed that car. Got slammed into twice, and no damage on the back. I was, yeah, that one time I was in the car with you, and that guy slammed into the back of us. That he was, drunk dude who, like, called his mafia lawyer to come yeah dude like, he just had dudes just show up all of a sudden he like made a call and then these dudes just appeared <laughs> i know it's so weird and uh he's obviously inebriated oh yeah i don't think we called we didn't call the cops no we did i guess we didn't need to we <laughs> no, i don't want to be wrapped up in that shit i don't know I don't, I don't care especially there's no damage it's like that's just a headache to deal with this guy let the guy drive drunk like i yeah. don't want it i don't want to he's in a school zone the, the the if he do, ma, ha, makes any problems, he'll sure solve it. It was nighttime. Yeah, you know who cares if he's in a school zone drunk? It, was it nighttime? It was nighttime. Yeah, I thought it was like sunset. I thought like there was still some daylight. I remember there still being some daylight. There might have been a little daylight. I remember it being like. Dark I don't remember already. it being pitch black. I remember it being like nine p.m. or something. Hmm. Well, I just can't believe your car took not even a scratch from that. No, nope. like we got smacked into like both of us, like our heads, like we got like a little like. Whoo! I got rear-ended on the highway like a uh, few years ago, and still uh, nothing. I was like, okay, that little things. There's like a little scuff, and I wiped it off. I was like, okay, cool. Oh man, I got uh, so I got I you know I I sold my old used Honda Civic to my buddy Christian, and then I got a, a new Honda Civic uh, earlier last year. And within the first two weeks I had it, I was like, okay, I have to, like, you know, this car is, is I, I really like it. I really like this car. I've always wanted, like, a newer Honda Civic. Mm -hmm. I love it. I got to, you know, be very careful with it. And I, and I pulled into my garage, and I wasn't pulled up enough, and I put the garage door down. And the little metal piece at the bottom, the bottom of my garage door is like a little metal, like, L piece. Yeah. And it went and just, the back just, eh, Fuck, scraped dude. straight down. And it peeled the paint completely off. So I covered it up with a I'd rather be fishing sticker, but still it's like, and I have that crack in my windshield too. A lot of people in the Christmas tree, uh, the guys got a Christmas tree five are like, Matt's freaking out about like the Ryan getting the grease on his ceiling, but he has a massive crack in his windshield. It gets bigger and bigger. It is getting bigger. I have to get it replaced. I don't, I, uh, I was parked still outside the Super Plega, Super Plega Max one day <laughs> and I just come outside and that crack was in my windshield. No idea how it got there. I'm guessing like a, like a. Someone was like, my guess is there were people doing yard work. You know who we should call to solve this mystery? Who? What's up, Holmes? Who's that? What's up, Holmes? He's off on the trail again trying to tail him. I don't, I don't know what that is, bro. What, son? What, son? That's me. None of that? No, I, what is that from, dude? It's What's Up Holmes. What the fuck is What's Up Holmes, bro? What do you mean? What is that? I've mentioned What's Up Holmes before. I don't think you have. Dude. I have. You're lying to me. Are you looking it up? Yeah. Find anything? I'm just saying we should hire What's Up Holmes. I think he could solve this this mystery. That's not a thing. Yes, it is. I can't find anything. <laughs> what, why are you lying? What are you doing, dude? I found this picture, dude. <laughs> it's like a really short cholo. Adventures of What's Up. Oh, did you make me watch this? Yeah, no, no, no. You made me watch this a couple years ago. The house rocked with wind. You, you showed this to me. Watson walked on in. Watson, that's me. Elementary Watson. It's a pleasure to meet you. Dude, I used to be obsessed with this. Yeah, you showed that to me years ago. I remember. It's 14 years ago. 
Wow. Yep. It's, it's weird looking at YouTube upload dates now and seeing like 12 years. <laughs> I know. Like when I go to my old channel, Damn. Format 24, and I see stuff, I'm like, wow, that's over a decade old. It's getting old. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. Like now being conscious Where'd of like. Where'd fucking water go? I got mine. Isn't it weird being conscious now of like a decade? Because up until recently, it's like a, a decade, you know, you didn't really understand like the length of a decade because you were too young but now it's like oh i can remember back being like mature at this time yeah like, i was when i was 16 i can remember it's like i remember things when i was 16 I was, and now i'm coming up yeah. on a decade of that i was 17 about to be i was about i would say 18 almost 10 years ago yeah yeah you're turning 28 this year right mm-hmm Woo! how's it feel an old man I'm turning 26 in a few weeks. I think like I I, re I relaxed into it. I kind of panicked a bit, like 26 and 27, like oh fuck, and now I'm just kind of like, eh. and I I I I think I'm kind of excited for 30s because I heard it's a lot more chill. I'm excited for 30s, honestly. I've never like panicked about age or like worried about age, but I did. A couple I worry about the moment of death. Yeah, a couple months ago, I had a like a little like crisis about age where I was like. It just randomly, I was like, 25. I'm 25. I'm 25? <laughs> and I was like, what What the fuck happened to my, my early 20s? Like, wait, it's where it's gone. And I freaked out. And then, like, I'd look up close in the mirror and be like, is that a wrinkle? Am I seeing, like, wrinkles in my skin? Fuck, I'm aging. And I would just, like, freak out like that, even though it's ridiculous. <clears throat> um, so I told Everyone my mom that. Ages. I told my mom that, and she's like, I'm not listening to any of this. <laughs> like, She's once again jealous of your youth. Yep, exactly. Because you're trying to vent to her about your mental struggles with aging. Sorry I don't have to wear those fucking big HD sunglasses when I go outside, Mom. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm 26. Every year feels a little bit older, like... Well, that's the stupidest thing I've ever said. It obviously... But like every year, like the age feels a little bit more... Because like when I turn 21, that doesn't feel... Like it's older and adult, it still feels young. Same with 22. 25 was the first age that felt like a because you're like in your 20s, yeah. And now 26 feels even more old. And I'm gonna look back and be like, man, I wish I could be 26 again. <laughs> For me, it's just like I, I, I'm, I'm mainly like, damn, it was a long time ago with where all my nostalgia was. Like when I used to fucking watch Rugrats, Cat Dog, or Barney VHS tapes back on like a tube television and feel the static with my hand or like oh, press my face on the side of the screen. Put your hair up to it and then, right, yeah. I remember right when I would, my thing back with our old CRT TVs, you turn it on and go, and I put your, put your head up to it and all your hair goes and to you it hear and the, sticks. You hear the, like the static. Man, I Good love times. CRT TVs. Also uh, accidentally fucking up VHS tapes, getting mm -hmm. the tape all fucked up mm -hmm. and not knowing how to. I did that with my uh, Rugrats uh, movie, it was no. an orange VHS, oh. and I did it because it had the penis videos. Damn, uh, you want to talk about penis videos? Ad for the the peanuts. Yeah, uh, commercial. You want to talk about peanuts videos? The guy says penis, and they actually, in in a future version of that, replaced him with like another shot. Where he's like, you want to talk about peanuts videos? Uh, that dude did on purpose. You could see it on his face. He said, was, "Did he have a smirk on him?" Everybody, just I've talked about this before, but for those who haven't 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 heard this. On my old Rugrats VHS, there was a commercial before the movie for for Peanuts, like Charlie Brown. Uh, and this guy goes, you want to talk about Peanuts videos? But he fucking says penis. He says, you want to talk about penis videos? Uh, and I replayed that part so many times. I would called all my friends on our landline, like held it up to the TV, like, listen to this. And uh, I replayed it so much that I fucked up the VHS and I had to take it, take apart the VCR to get it out. And my parents were very upset. And now if I play that part of the VHS back, it's just like, it's all staticky because I just fucking ruined it. Oh, I have this one memory of when I was a kid, I had these like little dinosaur toys I would play with. And it came with like fake boulders, like really small boulders, probably the size of like your pinky nail in terms of like, just like how big they were. And the, but then picture like a little pebble of circumference. And I like stuck those things in my There's nose. Of, advertisement. Sorry, I guess. Cinemasker. I'm gonna go pee. Cinemasker podcast talked about it too. No, dude, come back. You want to talk about penis videos? D dude fucking says penis. If you're a small business owner like myself and Mr. Ryan McGee, you're busy enough as it is. 
you don't have time to deal with the hassle of going to the post office. But with Stamps.com, you can skip the trip and never waste another dollar or minute. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer, so you can spend less time at the post office and more time running your business. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. That's one of the biggest percent offs I've ever heard. Whether you're an office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life a lot easier. All you need is a computer and a standard printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. I love Stamps.com uh, because I hate going to the post office. Everyone's always in a bad mood. Uh, and I hate having to wait in line, and I don't have to do that anymore because Stamps.com, when I need to ship something, boom, just print it out from my computer, bada boom, bada, bada bing, wonderful. So you can do what little Matt Watson did and save time and money this year by going to Stamps.com. Sign up with the promo code SUPERMEGA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. How about that? No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code SUPERMEGA. Yeah. Saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2022. Why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for wireless? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. With Mint Mobile, choose the amount of monthly data that's right for you and stop paying for data that you never use. I love using Mint Mobile because their wireless service starts at just 15 bucks a month and it's super cheap and I can use my old number and it's and it's a good service and you know my friends use it too. It's it's fun to use. Wee to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash supermega. That's mintmobile.com slash supermega. Hey, Brian, are you telling them about mintmobile.com slash supermega? I am. I'm telling them how they can cut their wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash supermega. You still in the middle of your piss section? No, I'm done. I'm obviously uh, not over a toilet pissing. Are you going to confirm that you are now? I've just been drinking some some water, you know? I'm, I'm hydrated. Hi, Layden. Brian's face is blue. Black and blue. What's the black's face? because of the pain. <laughs> the blue's because I'm upset. Why are you upset? Because this fucker's over here watching Joe Rogan in the office. Layton, why are you watching fucking Joe Rogan in our office? We already went over this. You're not allowed to watch Joe Rogan. All right. He's poisoning your brain, dude. I don't subscribe to those facts. <sighs> He's been watching JonTron, too. Obviously. Welcome back, JonTron fans. What's up, JonTron stands? Ooh. I'm a bit of a, of, a, of a Tron head. Oh, I'm a bit yeah. of, a, of a Tron head myself. Dude, when he makes that bird do, do, a, do, do, the, do a voice. Yes. 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 Uh, my, oh, my. Ah. Uh, when he... When he uh, debates for in favor of a white ethno state, yes, yes, <laughs> that yes. is not what he said. John Tron fans like he just said, why is it not okay for whites for to stay to themselves and to preserve their heritage and their whiteness? My my dude was was using uh, eugenics. Uh, if it's stuff. okay, if it's okay for other people, then how come it's not okay for us? Like you just have to have a complete. I don't lack think any, of historical understanding. I also don't think anyone to have that opinion. A, anyone is saying that they are okay with someone being forced to marry someone of the same race so that they can continue their genetic line. We need more white babies. There are certain cases. We're gonna where be I a could, minority, bro. There are cases where I could understand where like it's like you you're you find someone more attractive too because they have somewhat of a similar outlook on life based on your upbringing or or whatever the fuck like I could understand that but like you don't have to be like I'm going to preserve my race yeah it, like that that's 
it's like that's so dumb. It's it's fucking the weirdest like tribal mindset. Well, it's racist, but I need the white race to stand up and make sure that they only sleep with other whites so we can preserve our whiteness. Ryan, we're going to be a minority by 2042. We're getting more tan and tan. Have you seen those pictures? I don't like it. Have you seen those pictures of what people are going to look like in 20 years? Yes, they're, they're gray. They're all olive colored. Yo! No! <laughs> I'm going to miss the whites. Man, I will miss those whites. That's Trust sure. me, they're not going anywhere. Also, like the whole thing about like whites becoming a minority in the U.S. <laughs> it's like who cares? Like I like why do I why why is that like a scary thought? Because the whites am I gonna get put in like a labor camp? Because uh, the whites own the United States. Damn right. How would Matt? How would you feel if uh, I don't know a bunch of white people uh, uh, whited out Africa? How would I feel about that? Yeah. Well, um. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Why did it up a lot? There's a bunch of territories. Hence, that uh, still have. Rhodesia. Yeah. Per so. se. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. I love uh, uh, stripping. High five, white people. And, and, and pillaging in a, in, a, in a country and, and ruining their future. It's so what? awesome. The, the war on white people has to stop, dude. It, it, is it a crime to be white? Oh, I'm a straight white man. Is that such a crime? The tribes were mean to each other before we even got there. That's that argument where it's like, well, you know, the, the Indians were killing each other before we got here. It's like, okay, and that, that justifies, like, exterminating a fucking <laughs> race of people and taking their land how? That's what they were doing to each other. Yeah, well, you guys wouldn't be able to sit here and have your little podcast if we hadn't done that, so. You're right. Thanks, Christopher. Thanks, Chris. Well, it's not Chris's, you know. Well, it's not thanks to him. He started it. Well, I'm, pfft. No. Did Chris, was Christopher Columbus Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. He's from Spain. He spoke Espanol? He, he, from Barcelona? He's, yeah. Barcelona? Barcelona. Why do they say it like that? Barcelona? Come on, Spaniards. You know, it's Barcelona. You know, little known fact, he died with a hard cock. Really? Yep. Very rare, but he died with a hard cock. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You I just did? I can't ask him. Well, you could if you pray hard enough. But they mummified him, so you can see his erect penis to this day in a museum. Seriously? They nope. didn't mummify Christopher Columbus? No, they didn't you're, mummify Christopher Columbus. Okay. You said, like, I always know when you're joking, but that one you said with, like, the confidence of, like, oh, that's, like, a weird little-known fact. Yeah. You know? They have kept uh, someone's, like, a historical figure's penis uh, in a museum. What's his face? He was, a, 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 like, a, a ruler. Yeah. Um, not, not Vlad the Impaler. Uh... Um, it's such a big penis. We just have to keep it. It was huge. I, I I've seen a, a preserved penis in a in like Ripley's Believe It or Not museum. Uh, let me see whose it was. The world's only museum. Oh, dude, wait. There's a penis museum. Rasputin's penis. It was Rasputin. Okay, Rasputin. Uh, I let's love see, Rasputin. Let, let's see what it looks like. Well, I've seen Norbit, dude. I love Rasputin. I mean, that's a big ass cock, dude. Look how big that thing is. Yeah, he fucking, he was packing some schmeat. Why did they preserve that fucking cock? Like, of all the, why? I didn't know Russian people had big, big peepees. Yeah, man, but apparently there is a penis museum. So if you'd ever be interested in taking a trip. In Iceland, a man has collected 283 preserved penises from 93 species of animals, including Homo sapiens. Ooh. That's a, how do you get into that? <laughs> Yeah, I collect penises. <laughs> you know, some people collect baseball cards. I collect, you know, the the shaft of of beasts of several beasts. Shaft of beast. Like an RPG you must collect item. the shaft of beast. Collect three shaft of beast and bring them to me, and I'll put them together and make you a weapon, <laughs> a suitable weapon. The super mega game. There, like this in the super mega RPG, there it, needs to be shaft of beast. If we had a, like an e, like a super mega RPG, I would love to write it. That would be fun. It'd essentially be like writing a oh, dude. Book. We should just get RPG maker, and you and I should just make just the two of us a just super mega RPG. The two of us. I'll make the art. You can make some art we too. We'll write it and make it. If we try, just, just the two of us. Just the two of us. I've been listening to a little bit of old Will Smith too. Parents just don't understand that 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 type of Will Smith. Yeah, they're like, uh, get jiggy with it, y'all know. Summertime. Summer, summer, summertime. I do. I have a soft spot for old old Will Smith. I used to listen to him. Big Willie when I style. Went to my mom with like, 
I went to my mom with my mom to the gym and I had this like bright blue and white CD player that I would play Will Smith CD while working out. Bright blue and white are the colors of the big uh, Big Willie style nice. album. It was like light sky blue, like Carolina blue almost. Carolina blue. North Carolina. Oh, like Tar Heels? Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what. I saw the coach of the Tar Heels once at a uh, farmer's market. And I, my mom was like, Did you say hey? No, you my mom pointed him, him out. Oh, I, this I was before you were famous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he he wouldn't have known. He wouldn't have with. interacted. But now he would. Now I've got He's that He's probably a big fan. You know what we can do, Ryan? We can go down. You and I can go down to Melrose, and there's that mural of the angel wings that okay. influencers take a picture in front of. But you can't take a – not just anyone can take a picture in front of this mural. You have to be verified or have – I think 20,000 followers. What if I show up there like at like 3 a.m.? Well, there's a security guard there. 24-7? Probably not 24-7. That's what I thought. But, you know, we could go and take a picture in front of it. <laughs> We've earned it. You have to be verified or you have to have a Yeah, there's amount. a security guard that checks if you're either verified on social media or you have like 10 or 20,000 followers or something. I don't, I don't remember the exact number. Is this like a part of the art? It's like... Yeah, it's on Melrose. I'm so. trying to say something. Melrose is the most like fake like pretentious fucking place welcome to la baby yeah at, at, like that that's like when you think of like influencers it's melrose in fact i saw billboards on melrose for some service that's like grow your followers double your views buy this book written by two youtubers yeah it's all yeah fucking it's fucking bullshit. bullshit we should we should honestly you and i should do a super mega video where we we make like an almost like an MTV show about the influencer lifestyle. And we'll go down to Melrose, get dressed up, and we'll interview other influencers we see on the street. Honestly, it'd be so easy to like, if we tell them that we're doing a show, like they'd just be like, oh yeah, what's up, dude? And they would totally make an ass of themselves, and we should do that. Yeah, okay. We could get you all decked out and some drip. You know, I love getting decked out. Yeah. You and I should have a little Melrose video day. We go and just... If we got Tucker with his big Alexa, tell them we're a camera crew. and be like, yeah, we're shooting a show for... Uh, for Steven Spielberg. <laughs> about Steven, influencers. Steven Spielberg's doing a movie about influencers. So he's... So we're... Um, we're doing like... Uh, like research. Casting. We're going out and we're getting like people, like how they're dressed, how they talk. Hey, so can, can, you, we, inter can we Tell us a little bit about your, your social influence. Dude, like we should do that and just... <laughs> can we have like half sheets of paper where they sign like a fake like NDA? Dude, so that, like it feels more official? Yeah, so no, like we could easily even fake more. it. Like, have someone carry a boom mic with us and, like, a reflector so it really looks like a TV All you crew. have to do is compliment someone. Just be like, oh, shit, nice shirt. And be like, oh, thanks. And do you mind if uh, we're... Are you, are, you, are you an influencer? Yo, how many followers you got, dog? Uh, f About 30,000 <sighs> billion. What we need to do, though, is that day we need to re like brand our social media profiles so it looks like that really cringy influencer so we can show them our profile Check <laughs> yeah it out, dude like you know, <laughs> i got i gotta have the uh the fit it like the snapback that's just sitting like gently on top of my head like and it's sideways like jacob sartorius would do yeah he's still making music dude good good for him I guess. I have more monthly listeners on Spotify than Jacob's. Ooh. Ooh, Matt Watson. Matt Watson big, yo. Yeah, dude. Suck it, Jacob. And I could say that because he's over 18 now. My phone just buzzed. Who Justin. Justin's calling? Yo, is Little Dawn making a thumbnail for Sites Adventure 4 yet? Did we never get a thumbnail made for it? Uh, I, I asked him, let me, uh, I'll, after the podcast, I'll, I'll hit him okay. up. Um, everyone's been wanting us to play that and I, I don't know if it's, if it's out yet. I don't know what day we have it on the calendar. We're trying to be more organized this year. So we have like a sticky notes up on a calendar to uh, show when uploads are going up. Yep. And we got, uh, we got like a whole like work app that we put all of our like stuff on and we can move stuff around and see it. And you know, it's a new year. So we're going to try these things and eventually, uh, fall off of them. And, yep. Yeah. Not upload a lot, uh, but and that's what y'all are here for. At least we're honest. Yeah. Speaking of which, we got to post a Patreon. Yeah. Um, also, I don't want to spoil too much, but uh, Patreon, we got a little something special coming very soon um, for all patrons. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dun, 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 dun. Stop. That's too much. Sorry, sorry. But yeah, we got something special coming for you patrons. Something that Jackson has been working effortlessly to set up. Aw. Look what, what was in my passport. 
Hey. It's a beautiful picture of me and Ryan. You hated it. I didn't hate it. I love this picture. You kept saying how much I didn't look enthused. Well, you don't look enthused. I look excited to be with I my friend I have a big-ass smile on my face, my arms around you, and you look like you're a like simple, a celebrity happy that has a really annoying fan that came up and took a picture while he was at dinner. Well, I have a really annoying friend next to me, but you know, I would never treat you like a fan, Matthew. What the hell, dude? You're one of my biggest. I am one of your biggest fans, Ryan. Friends. Biggest friend? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I am one of your biggest friends, too. I'm and your height. best friend ever. Am I your tallest friend? Do I know anyone taller than you? No, Luke. How oh, tall is Luke? God, bleep out yeah, I'll his bleep fucking out his last, last name. name. Hold up. I wonder if I can call him. Yeah, Ugh, call he'd him, He'd hate dude. that. He'd hate that. Why, dude? He came and stayed with us. He hates uh, this type of shit. Back when we lived with Markiplier. Yeah, true. And he came and crashed with us. That was awesome. I love Luke. I don't know if he'll answer. We just gotta call people, bro. Yeah. I, like, never call him. Ryan, is everything okay? <laughs> yeah, he's... I assume he's not gonna pick up, because we're both really bad at responding and all that other shit. I know how to end the podcast, by the way. How? Your call has been forwarded <sighs> to an audio... Damn it, Luke. I'm gonna, I, I kind of just want to dial a random number and see if they would help me end the podcast. Okay. So I just typed a random one, see if it goes to anything. Mm, maybe not, because sometimes the numbers don't exist. It says calling, but nothing's nothing's happening. Let me try a different number. I'm going to try one from Charleston, 843. Let's try this, bro. There we go. Shitty internet. Yeah. Connection in general. Who? Hey, what's up? Hey, who is this? I don't even know. Oh, this is this is Matt. I'm just on a podcast right now, and I was wondering if you'd help me end it. This is who? Matt. Matt. Matt Watson from YouTube. Okay. Um, I don't know who. I'm gonna go right now. I don't know who this is. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, could you help me in this podcast? Um, no, thank you. Okay. Well, have a good day. Well, we can't end the podcast. She wouldn't. She was no help. <sighs> it looks like we have to do it ourselves again. <sighs> I was really hoping she'd help me out there. Yeah. Well. Anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. There, of course, will be another episode next week. And you can, Kill me! you know, watch the other stuff that's coming out on our channel. We did backlog a good bit of Let's Play, so you have fun with that. We got a mail cup video coming out by the way, soon. Yeah, by the way, uh, in the Sonic Mania series, which go watch, by the way, it's a five-episode series with Justin, where uh, Justin beat Sonic Mania while yep. we goofed off. Uh we made the joke that's like, this is the last Let's Play ever. And I've been getting so many DMs and people, tweets like, is it really the last? No, it's not the last like Let's we've Play. We've talked about Pokemon we and all this other so shit. We have so much more on the way right now. Um, we have a whole WarioWare series coming out. Woo. Oh, shit. I should give someone a, a shout out real quick. It's only because, so I was playing Sea of Thieves last night. Sea of Thieves. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I ran into this other pirate who was also a solo slooper, which means you play the game by yourself on one ship. And uh, he he turned out to not be you know toxic and mean. He's very nice. We ended up teaming up oh. and, and and going after other people. And uh, I had a good time. And he was just very nice. He's a and he turned out to be a streamer. Oh, you know he has he has two hundred and two followers. Okay, yeah. So he's he's getting up there. I just want to. Uh, uh, it's a uh, L E G A T E Chronos K R O N O S. Legate, leg, I don't know. But that, Legate. But he was super awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 about it. I I was just very appreciative of his kindness because it's I had just two sessions previously just been attacked by a ga a fully stacked galleon, attacked Ooh. by a fully stacked brig, and I was solo, and Jeez. it's never fun. That's not fun at all. Um, unless you try to make it fun, but usually you just get donked on. Well, shout out to that guy. Yeah, he was he was very nice and made and and made my night. Yeah, so. that's great, man. You know, the kindness of a stranger goes a long way. Apparently, he's been streaming for like six years or something. He was a, he played Sea of Thieves since day one. Wow, he has the day one sniper rifle. Go check this shit. guy out, guys. Did he, does epic. he know that you you stream and do YouTube and everything too? No. Okay, so he's gonna suddenly be like, "What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, where are all these little losers coming from?" <laughs> he put me in the title. 
of uh, the stream at one point. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I know how to end the episode. Let me tell y'all about CBDistillery.com. With over 2 million customers, CB Distillery is the source I trust. It's a question that we've all been asking ourselves. Does CBD work? Over 90% of doctors said their patients have used CBD to treat a health condition. Listen, when 9 out of 10 patients use CBD, that speaks volumes about how safe and effective CBD can be. People use CBD for all kinds of ailments and conditions. I personally use CB Distillery to get uh, CBD gummies that I, I like to use to help me sleep at night. It's fantastic. And if sleep's a problem for you like it is me, 90% uh, of CB Distillery customers said they sleep better with CBD. You know, if nagging discomfort's a problem, you're achy, whatever, 80% of customers said CBD helps with discomfort after physical activity. And if you're looking for a little peace and calm these days, you'd be wise to explore CBD. It calms the nerves and it's great. If you haven't discovered the power of CBD, you're missing out. Go to cbdistillery.com, where you order online with no prescription required, and enter Super Mega for 20% off. Again, enter code Super Mega for 20% off at cbdistillery.com. That's cbdistillery.com. Not available in Idaho, Iowa, and South Dakota.